Hello folks, Jack in the training department and welcome back to another Teardown Tuesday. Today we are going to talk about filter pumps from fryers. But as part of that same conversation, we've got to talk about the motor. It's very common for technicians to replace the motor and the filter pump at the same time, but that's not always the best practice. And the reason why is that one or the other is usually the problem. Replacing them both as a set guarantees that you've fixed the problem, but if you spend a little more time troubleshooting, you can arrive at a conclusion and replace one part instead of both parts. So let's talk about what that troubleshooting looks like. In the case of our motor, our data plate here tells us we are a 115 volt motor, 6.6 .6 amps, and it gives us some other specs as well. Horsepower, RPM, frame, that sort of thing. But the thing we really want to look at is over on this side, and it's this sticker here, thermally protected. And that thermally protected is this guy right here. It's a little button, looks almost like a breaker, and if for whatever reason the pump has jammed, this button will pop. The motor will stop running. So we're not going to take the motor any further apart right now. Before we set this off to the side, let's take a look up here at the drive. Now, on the filter pump itself, you see we have this tang sticking out, and on the motor, we have this little socket, this slot with a band around it for the tang to slot into. When these are assembled, when they're in use, they go together like this. And there's bolts that bolt the pump to the motor. Now on older machines, one of the failures that we used to see in the field was this seal failing. The pump itself has a hard life. It goes from cold to hot every time you run oil through it and any debris or grit that gets through the filter paper ends up grinding or eating this seal. So this seal would fail, and on old pumps, they did not have these slots. There was a gasket here that sealed it to the motor face. So I'll show you a picture of what used to happen when this seal would fail. I'll just crop it into the video here. But the oil would shoot out of this seal and fill up this space and then inject itself into the motor and once it hardened the motor couldn't turn. Then you would have to replace the filter pump and the motor both. So again I'll put the picture in here that shows you what that failure would look like. Then you can see in the picture the the inlet of the motor has totally filled with, with oil and then the windings themselves have oil in them as well that's then hardened. So in current production they've added this slot so that if the seal fails the oil runs down the face of the motor instead of actually coming into the motor itself. And you can see on our example motor here that this seal had started to fail and that's exactly what happened. The oil ran down towards the bottom of the, the mount here, towards the bottom of the motor. So in this case the motor still spins freely. Uh, I did power this motor up. It does run. So I'm, I'm not sure why the motor itself was replaced. In all likelihood, it didn't need to be. So let's set that to the side here, and then we'll take a look inside the pump. So the pump itself is a very simple hydraulic pump. Filter oil, or uh, fry oil is just oil, and, and this is basically a food grade hydraulic pump. So we already talked about the back here, the drive and the seal. We've got two ports. One is an inlet and one is an outlet. And when we open this up, what we'll see in here is very similar to any industrial hydraulic pump. Again, the only difference is this is built to be food grade. So inside here, you can see we have two gears that mesh together and the oil gets pulled from one port up through and pushed out the other port depending on which direction the motor rotates. So in this case, with this rotation direction, this would be the inlet port 
and this would be the outlet port. Now this particular pump does not look very bad. There's no signs of rust in here, and, and we can get rust if someone has run water through the filtration system, which is a really bad idea. You never want to do that, but occasionally it does happen. People do it sometimes. And if that happens, you'll start to see rust in here, and when the pump runs, it will just grind itself up. Now, these meshing rotors, you want to be real careful if you ever pull one of these apart because these edges can be very sharp. But typically the failure we see on these is either the seal, like what we're seeing on this one, where the sealing surface just doesn't hold anymore, or we get debris that jams these rotors. They mesh together very finely, and if any debris, like crumbs or breading or, or pieces of, of uh, food product, get pulled in past the filter paper, these will jam. Now when these jam, we trip the thermal overload on the motor, and when that happens, you reset the thermal overload and try it again. And if the pump doesn't turn, the next step is to pull this cover plate off. You pull this cover plate off, and you can slide out these gears and get any debris out of there without really disassembling any other part of the pump. So you clean these up, you put them back in the housing, and you turn the motor back on, and nine times out of ten the pump will run again. The other thing that will happen if we have any kind of water get in the system is we'll get pitting on the inside of these surfaces. And you can see in here we really don't see any sign of that. So this pump really doesn't look bad except for the seal failing. And you can see that the seal was failing by the, the discoloration that's on the shaft. See, when it's installed, it just barely sticks out of the seal. But when we pull it back, you can see that it was, it was pushing the oil up past. So in this case, the pump had a seal failure, but we ended up putting a motor in it as well, and we probably didn't need to. But the pump itself is very simple. It's very easy to take apart. And once you get it apart, it's very easy to clean and put back together. So let's set this off to the side, and I think we actually will tear down the motor. Let's put this together real quick. So our first step is to get the cover plate open. And you can see there's no instructions in here, but there are a number of connections and terminals. So if this had, for whatever reason, all been disconnected, we would have to come in here and just double check all the wiring. But what we want to do next is probably pull so we've got these torques here, and we're going to pull these off, take a look inside the thermal overload. And you can see here that's really just a cover for this button. But when we pull the button out, there's a very small thermal disk assembly here. And it's all soldered in, so I can't really get it out of the motor casing. But you can see here, it is a little thermal disk assembly. So with that out, let's go back now and pull this end cap apart. Alright. So, with that out of the way, I think we may actually have to cut this to get it apart. But let's try and pop loose the end of the motor here and just see what comes out. Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go. like looks like we're actually caught on some of the windings here some of the winding wiring so let's get those off So these are the wires for the winding, and then we've got these two coming up. And you can see this centrifugal switch here. I'll, I'll come into a close-up on that once I pull the rotor out. But that engages against this, and this is the centrifugal switch. So you, you can see, it's kind of hard to get the camera Quite right there. But you can see when that ring snaps in and snaps out, it connects and disconnects this set of terminal. So this is how the motor starts. When it starts and spins up, it's in one position, and then once it's up to speed, it closes the switch or opens the switch, depending how it's set up. And that changes which winding on the motor is energized. So in this case, it looks like, looks like it actually stays closed until the motor comes up to speed and then it pops open, drops out the start winding. All right, so we're gonna lift this rotor out if we can. Oh, you can see there's a, a washer there, flex washer to tension that bearing. Let's see if we can get that out. Might have to take it out through the other end of the housing there. There we go. All right, so here's our winding. See our winding down in there. And then here's our rotor with the, the centrifugal switch. So as the motor speeds up, these weights try and fling themselves outward. And as they do that, it reduces the, the tension on the switch and lets the switch pop into this running position. So they actually flex the, the spring steel down inside there when they try to fling themselves out. So if we flex it out, you can see it pull the spring steel. So that spring steel switch is very, very simple, but it's very important to this motor. It makes sure that the motor is able to, to disengage the start windings when it needs to. And you can see there's a cooling fan here. And there's our front bearing. Front bearing is still very good. And our back bearing is still very good. There's no noise or friction when I rotate them. So really it's not looking too bad. Now the motor does look like one of the windings may have become hot, but it's hard to tell if that's actually heat damage or if there was just dis a different color wire used for that part of the winding. Sometimes you'll see that discoloration, that kind of brownish color, if a particular winding gets too hot. So you can see some of the windings are, are a bare, bright, coppery color. This might be easier to see on this end. And some of the windings are kind of a green color. Sometimes that's the, the coating on the wire 
but you may also see that if one winding has overheated. In this case the color is so even that I think that's just the color of wire they use to make the motor. But these windings, these wires, are what create the magnetic field that interacts with our rotor, pulls it around in a circle. So that's it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. All right. Thanks for watching. Hi, folks. My name is Jack Kell, and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.